Hello, my name is Fred Amarin, and welcome to EFC Plus, the college funding solution. Today's topic is financial aid myths. There's a lot of misinformation when you go through the financial aid process. We just want to clarify a few things. One, you shouldn't complete the financial aid forms because I know I'm not going to qualify for financial aid. We believe that everyone should complete the financial aid forms. So this does a few things. It allows the students to borrow the money and brings the student in to have some financial responsibility in the process. And because of we live in such uncertain times, if you don't have the forms completed, it just puts added pressure if something should change in your financial life. Another myth out there is I should take all the assets out of the child's name. This is an important part of understanding your EFC calculations. Everyone thinks that just one number. Um, actually, it's four separate calculations. And depending on the school you apply to, this could make your decision much different. You also have to consider other things when you, if you decide to do that, such as taxes. So just be careful. That is not always true. Timing of the financial aid process is also critical. It starts second semester, junior year of high school to first semester senior year. The tax years and school years don't, don't match up, so you have to realize you have to do some advanced planning for that year on year. You do have to submit the forms each year. Another big process that we get a lot of questions on is retirement versus college funding. You really should do uh, a timeline that shows where you are as far as saving for retirement, when the last child is going to get out of school, and how much you can financially commit to that decision. Some half-truths that are out there. One, if I have less mo money, I'll qualify for more financial aid. That is true, but the schools are in a very difficult situation now. Your ability to pay is now looked at it on top of your academic attractiveness to the school. So your grades and what the child, the child or student brings to the table, such as you know athletics or a special skill or community service, all part of that discussion. I can also negotiate price with the schools. Somewhat also true, but again, you're going to need to have detail if things should change in your financial life. You can appeal. If you have a comp competitor school that's given more money, some of the schools will match it. But again, that will depend a lot on this year of the school and also your information. A lot of promotion has been on these loan forgiveness programs, people depending upon those to pay back the loans. These programs are very restructured, and you need to know the details before you depend on that. So just taking on the debt, thinking it's going to be forgiven, is not always a good idea. And then focusing on the, the expected family contribution, or EFC, they are just one part of the calculation. It is a starting point. I think it's important that you understand the details of that calculation. But as a similar situation, if you were buying a house, if you were just focusing on the interest rate or, or what the monthly payment would be and missing the other things such as taxes, and by just focusing on one thing may not be the best idea. So it's important to take a much broader view. And we have other, other videos that can help you go through that. Again, the software is called EFC Plus. It should help you. It does a full year cash flow. We hope you sign up for our EFC Plus email list and also subscribe to our channel. Thank you again. My name is Fred Amrine, and have a great day.